Hi everyone, I'm back with another AWS project. In this one, we're building a meme matching game. Let me show you how this works. So you'll click on a card and then you'll try to find the matching card until you, there we go, that was pretty lucky. Once you find the match, it'll be cleared from the board. And the idea is that you wanna clear out all of the cards. Now this is just running locally right now on my hard drive. Let me show you the code files. We've got a simple index.html file here, basically static text and a button. Most of the magic happens in JavaScript here. I've got the card array, just five different images that we're using. You could definitely add others. And then we've got functions for shuffling the cards, creating the board, flipping the cards, and then checking for a match. We've also got some simple styling here in a CSS file. So none of this is specific to AWS. This is all just a standard web development stuff. What we want to have happen is host this code in GitHub, create a pipeline that will pull that code every time you make a change and deploy it out to an S3 bucket so you can impress all of your friends and family and maybe even a potential employer. Let's talk through at a high level what we're going to be building. Our first stage is our source, our code basically, and that's going to live in a GitHub repo. The next stage would be to build and test your code, so compiling it, running your tests, and so on. We're actually going to be skipping this part for what we're doing. We don't need to build our code. But in the real world, you could use code build or Jenkins here, and then take the output of the build and test and deploy it. Here we're pushing our code out to wherever. In our case, it's going to go to an S3 bucket, but it could be to an EC2 instance, to Elastic Beanstalk, even to on-premises servers. So lots of options here. And the way this all happens is through code pipeline. This will automate and orchestrate these pieces. It'll run beginning to end. So I write the code or I update my code, check it in. It'll run through this pipeline and ultimately push it out to the S3 bucket for what we're doing. So that's the really big picture. As far as what this will cost, if you follow along, everything that we're doing is eligible for the free tier, which is usually the first 12 months that you have an account. If you're outside of that, for code pipeline, here are the prices. We're going to be using a V1 type, and that'll cost you $1 per active pipeline per month. And then for S3, that's very inexpensive storage for what we're doing, probably just pennies per month if you're outside of the free tier. But with that out of the way, let's get started. We want to start by getting the code. So the code that I just showed you a second ago, I have uploaded all of that to GitHub. I've got a repo out here called Code Pipeline S3 Game. This has got all of the code files, the meme images, and then a readme kind of explaining what I just walked through. What you want to do is fork this repo. Now I can't fork it because I own it, but you should be able to fork it, which will copy everything in the repo down to your own GitHub account and your own repo. And then you can work on it, do whatever you want, and then hook up your repo to push out to the S3 bucket eventually that we're going to create. So this first step should be easy peasy. The next thing we need to do is create and configure an S3 bucket. S3 is used for object storage. You can kind of think of it as file storage, but for static website content, it can also be used to host a website. And that's all we have. We don't have any server-side code. We just have HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So we can configure our S3 bucket to host the website. Out here in the AWS console, let's navigate to S3. And then we'll create a bucket. I'll call my bucket my meme game. Now S3 buckets do have to be globally unique across all of AWS. So you'll probably need to add some initials or a date here. I'll do that for mine. I'll leave mine in US West 2. You can choose a different region if you want. And then scrolling down, we do want to deselect this, block all public access. In our case, we're creating a static website that we want to be available to the world. So it's okay to uncheck this. In the real world though, if you're building something for work, for example, this is usually not a good idea and you'll need to acknowledge that you know what you're doing here. And then scrolling down, we'll leave the defaults and everything else and say create bucket. Now we can view details up here to get to that bucket. And there's a couple other things that we need to update. Coming into properties, by default, the bucket is not enabled to host a static website. So we need to scroll all the way down to the bottom and enable it here. Click on Edit and then Enable. 
And then the other change we need to make, scrolling down, is the index document, our default homepage basically, which will be index.html. And then we can say save changes. And the other change we need to make is around permissions. So if I come into that tab, remember that we turned off blocking all public access. But in addition to that, if we want the whole world to be able to get to our website and view the files, we need to add a bucket policy here. So over here, click on Edit. I'm going to paste in this policy. I will also link this below in the description if you just want to copy and paste it. But basically, this is saying we want to allow everybody, so principal, the asterisk here, to get object, basically read, all of the files in our bucket, the asterisk there. But we do need to update the bucket name. So my bucket name right here. Make sure you replace this with yours. And then we should be good to go. Scrolling down, we'll save changes. And we're moving right along. So we've got our code in GitHub. We've got the S3 bucket set up and configured. We've got the permissions. We've configured it for static website hosting. Now we need to create the code pipeline that will orchestrate getting the code from GitHub out to the bucket. So back to the AWS console. I'll open up a new tab here, and we'll go to Code Pipeline, and then Create Pipeline. I'll call my pipeline Meme Pipeline. We're going to go with V1. V2 has a bunch of stuff that we don't really need, but you can read about the difference here if you're interested. I'll create a new service role. I'd actually created a service role previously with this name. So I'll just add a dash a one to the end of mine. And this has to do with the permissions needed to do what we're doing. And then scrolling down, we'll say next. The source provider, again, this is where the code lives. And for us, that's going to be GitHub. We want version two. But you'll see there's lots of other options as well that you could grab your code from. And then we need to actually connect to GitHub from Code Pipeline. So we'll connect. For connection name, I'll say meme GitHub Pipeline. And then connect to GitHub. And then we want to install a new app to actually make that connection. This will bring you to your GitHub profile. And then scrolling down, you'll see the permissions that you're granting. And then you want to select specific repositories to grant access to. So I had previously selected mine, Code Pipeline S3 here, but you'll want to select your repository from the drop down list here. And then for you, this button, the Save button, should be clickable. So you want to click on that. And then on this next page, say Connect. Then back to this main page here for your connection, you should see that connection that you just created. Select that. And then the repository name. For me, this was Code Pipeline S3 Game. And then how are we going to trigger things? We want to say when there's a push in a branch. So basically, we're going to make a change in our code. That should trigger the pipeline to grab the new code and push it out to S3. You can also trigger on get tags or say that you don't want it to automatically run at all and you just want to do it manually. But we're going to go with push in a branch and the only branch that I have is main. And then we'll go with the code pipeline default for the artifact format and say next. Now for build provider, remembering back to our slides, this middle part here that we said that we're skipping, that's basically what it's asking about right now. If we did want to do a build, though, we could choose code build or Jenkins. We will skip, though, and confirm. We can't skip this one, though. This is the deploy stage, and you'll see all the different places we could deploy to. We're going to go with S3, but a lot of other options as well. Region, my bucket was in US West 2 in Oregon. And then the name of the bucket, I'll just type in meme to filter and select the bucket. And then for S3 object key, what you want to do here is say extract file before deploy. And that will make this object key 
and disappear. We don't need that anymore. And then we can say next. Scrolling down, review everything, and then create pipeline. And success. So you can see the progress here in source. Basically, it's going out to GitHub and grabbing our code, the HTML, the CSS, the JavaScript, that was successful, and then deploying. So deploying out to our S3 bucket that we set up and configured. So we should be able to go test things now. We can't just navigate to the index.html page, so in the bucket, what we need is back here on the Properties tab in your bucket. If you scroll all the way to the bottom to that static website hosting section, you should have a bucket website endpoint right here. And if you just click on that, that should open a new tab, and there is our game. So this is live out on a real URL that you could share with friends and family or whatnot, not just living on your local machine anymore. And if we start the game, let's just play a couple seconds here to make sure it's working. And there we go. Nicely done. Okay, so here's what we've built. We've got a pipeline set up to grab code out of GitHub and deploy it out to S3. And that's cool and all the first time you do it, but really the beauty of all of this is that Code Pipeline can detect when you make changes to your code and then grab that latest code and push it out to S3. So let's just go make a small change in our GitHub repo. We'll commit the change and see that that gets automatically deployed to our bucket. So I'm going to go out to my GitHub repo. You want to go out to yours, where you forked to, and I'll just open up the index.html page, and I'll edit here in the browser. We'll just make a simple change. Welcome to the meme matching game updated, just so we can see that change, and then we'll commit changes. We'll see that we're adding updated to test the code pipeline trigger. We'll commit this directly to our branch. And then back to code pipeline. There we go. We saw that it just detected the change. We've now got source in progress. So it's grabbing the latest code. And then in a second, we should see that it's deploying out of the bucket. And success to S3. Perfect. Let's come out to our game again. We'll refresh. And there is our updated text. Perfect. So ta-da, here's what you have built. This is definitely something that you could share with friends and family. Play the matching game, add a timer, add scoring, add additional images, whatever you want to do. Kind of a fun game. And definitely something that you could highlight to an employer as well, that you know how these pieces work. Now before you leave me, let's spend just a second to clean up the resources so that you don't incur any unnecessary charges if you're outside of that free tier. Coming back to Code Pipeline, Let's take a look at pipelines here, just backing up a level. You want to select the pipeline that you created and then say delete. And delete. And then let's come into the S3 bucket. Here you'll want to back up to the full list of your buckets. I'll filter down. Select my meme game and then delete. Now you can't delete a bucket if it has stuff in it like ours does, but there's a handy link here to empty bucket configuration. We'll permanently delete and empty. And now that the bucket's empty, we can say delete bucket configuration. Enter the name of the bucket and delete. As far as what you do with your repo, that's totally up to you. There's no AWS charges associated with this one. But like I mentioned, there's lots of new features and different things that you could add and have a little bit of fun. So that's it. If you like hands-on projects like this, then check out these others. I've linked them below in the description. They have a similar style where we walk through step-by-step -step using a whole bunch of different AWS services to get a working project in the end. If you like this video, give me a big thumbs up and also think about subscribing for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching.